There's nothing like cooking up a dish of your favorite comfort food. Maybe it's a family recipe that your grandma used to make or something that connects you to your culture. Well, that connection could go deeper than you think, since there are a few meals that we eat today that humans have made for centuries. So join us in gathering a few of these ancient menu items from all over the world, and let's throw together a sort of archeological potluck. Before we get going, let's set some ground rules for this picnic. We know humans and our ancestors have been cooking food over fires for, well, a while. And while that's still very cool, we're gonna be a bit more particular about what we consider prepared food for this first potluck, even if it's only hypothetical. We need evidence of multiple ingredients being prepared together using specific multi-step methods. So we're not counting recipes that boil down to just meat plus heat. No offense to all you barbecue masters out there. Now that we've settled that, let's dig our forks into some of the oldest evidence of potluck-worthy dishes from around the world. But first, a drink. If you're not a great cook, you might be used to getting assigned to beverage duty. So let's start by talking about what your contribution to this party would be, archeologically speaking. The earliest evidence of beer making we have comes from a cave in the Levant region of the Mediterranean. The site dates to 13,000 years ago and was occupied by semi-sedentary foragers called the Natufians. And the grains they used to make their beer were foraged, not farmed. That's right, these people figured out beer even before they invented agriculture. But this beer didn't quite hit like cracking a cold one with the boys, and not just because refrigerators weren't a thing yet. This beer wouldn't have been very high in alcohol, for one thing. And analysis tells us it would be a lot thicker than you might want your beer to be. Plus, we don't think that they filtered the grain bits out, so it would have been chunky. So although it may not sound like something you'd reach for at the liquor store, it had all the key factors that make beer, beer. That is, malting, mashing, and fermentation. Malting involves germinating grains before they are dried and stored. That's followed by crushing said malt and then heating it up to make a mash, and then, with the help of yeast, leaving it to ferment. By the way, the Natufians didn't have clay pots or containers, so they were doing all this in hollows dug out in the stone floors of caves. So they were really dedicated to getting their drink on. Mmm, thick, chunky floor beer. And luckily, this brewing process damages the grains in specific ways. So archeologists could tell all that happened just from the bits of grain left behind. So while the first beer wasn't exactly the same alcoholic beverage we enjoy today, it certainly appears to have been a crowd favorite for longer than you'd think. Which brings us to our other ancient fermented beverage, wine. Humans have been sipping wine for thousands of years, too. Researchers have traced back wine's origins to Transcaucasia, the region that today encompasses Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. The oldest traces of wine we've found are at least 8,000 years old, and they were found in some of the very oldest clay pots we've found in the region, suggesting that basically the first thing people did when they figured out how to make vessels was to put alcohol in them priorities. It took thousands of years after this invention before winemaking spread more broadly. But it's become a staple in many cultures, where bottles get brought out for celebrations and rituals, consumed for medicinal purposes, and just to get the good vibes flowing. So beer and wine both have places of honor in our potluck spread. We will be checking IDs, though. Sorry. And what could go better with wine than cheese? Humans have been consuming animal milks long before we figured out how to turn them into a tasty solid. When we look into the history of cheese making, it's tricky to figure out where it truly first popped up, given that dairy use has shown up independently in a few societies over time. We do know that some of the earliest known cheese production happened in Croatia, roughly 7,200 years ago. And we learned that 
from pottery. See, fatty acids like the ones in cheeses don't break down the same way as other biological materials can. So when the cheesy residues soak into the pores of clay vessels, they're really well preserved and we can study them thousands of years later. Dairy was likely hugely helpful for young children who were recently weaned to extend their milk drinking period and get them through those early years. And figuring out how to make cheese would have had huge benefits to early farmers, and not just because cheese is delicious. At the time that cheese started popping up, we can tell from DNA analysis that lactose intolerance was still the norm, at least for adults. Children make an enzyme called lactate which digest those lactose sugars in milk. But for most other mammal species, adults don't need lactase, so they stop making it. And the lactose-tolerant genetic trait only showed up in humans about 5,000 years ago. So drinking milk as an adult before then would have uh, resulted in some tummy troubles. But cheese is lower in lactose, which means we can gain the nutritional benefits of the milk used to make it without the accompanying rumbles. And for that, cheese will always be beloved. Now, when it comes to a potluck, you gotta have sides. And humanity's favorite side of all time has to be bread. Surprisingly, despite being one of the most important foods for people around the world, the origins of bread making are still poorly understood. And you'd think that in order to make bread, we'd have to have mastered growing the grains that we wanted to put into those loaves. But much like beer, it looks like we started making bread way before we started farming. Like, 4,000 years before. This evidence comes from Jordan and dates to 14,400 years ago. So our oldest evidence of bread making is twice as old as cheese and predates the agricultural revolution too. This study published in 2018 dramatically shifted the bread timeline, giving that the previous record holding old bread was almost 5,000 years younger. These breads were probably more of a multi-grain flatbread style base which sounds healthy. But if you like your bread fluffy, that came later. We know that the ancient Egyptians were making leavened breads as early as 3,000 years ago, thanks to microscopic analysis of the remains left on clay vessels. That said, the practice of yeast-risen bread could be much, much older. At a site called Çatalhöyük in what's now modern-day Turkey, it's possible that people were making fermented fluffy breads as far back as 8,600 years ago. We know people there were processing grains and were at least making, quote, bread-like products using grains like wheat and barley. And literally while we were researching this episode, Turkish researchers announced the discovery of an actual ancient bread loaf at the same site via a press release. However, as of filming this in April of 2024, we haven't been able to track down a peer-reviewed study backing up that claim. And most of the sources we could find were written in Turkish, which none of us at SciShow speak. So at least for now, we may want to take that bread loaf with a grain of salt. It'll taste better that way anyway. If you're a fan of Mexican food, you'll probably be thrilled to see tamales at a potluck. This popular dish is made of corn dough wrapped around veggies or meat, all enclosed in corn husks and steamed. And it's not only delicious, but also very very old. Humans may have been enjoying them all the way back in the pre-classic period, between 4,000 and 2,250 years ago. This is around when the Maya people developed a process called nishtamalization, which is a technique where you add alkaline material to uncooked corn in order to break down the outer coating, making it easier to cook and way more nutritious. The resulting corn mash is pretty soft, so it tends to be cooked up into things like tortillas and and tamales. Niche tamalization predates the appearance of traditional tortilla griddles, so making tamales was probably the best way they had to cook their corn at the time. And because nobody can resist taking a food pick of a particularly delicious meal, the Maya who were making these ancient tamales absolutely documented their work. We found glyphs showing these bundles of deliciousness dating to over 2,000 years old. Tamales are still eaten on certain holidays and have an important place in lots of cultural events, so it's not all that surprising that they were revered way back when, too. And I think our paleo potluck counts as a tamale 
Morales worthy party. Now a real potluck showstopper might be to show up with homemade hand pulled noodles because who doesn't love noodles? Humanity has been enjoying them for at least 4,000 years. Based on evidence from an archaeological site in China, appropriately coined the Lija Noodle House. And these ancient noodles were still in their bowl, too. Archaeologists found an upside down bowl on the ground of the excavation site, and when they picked it up, they found these desiccated looking noodles. Crunchy. They compared the remaining plant cell bits in the noodles to various other grains from China at the time and found these noodles were probably made using millet grain. And this is surprising because millet doesn't have any gluten in it, which is the protein that makes wheat-based doughs stretchy. So for a while, researchers had no idea how people were able to make long, skinny, stretchy noodles from millet, especially given the technology available at the time. This drove researchers to look for evidence of just what these people needed to do to their millet to make it into slurpable noodles. Their experiments included pounding, steaming, and fermenting the dough to get as much elasticity as possible, all of which were methods that could be done with what those chefs had in their kitchens at the time. And in the end, they were able to make that stretchy dough into some seriously long noodles, up to 120 centimeters, which is about four times as long as store-bought spaghetti noodles. So so if you're the type that wants to show off your culinary skills at the potluck, homemade noodles are clearly where it's at. And hey, you don't have to feel bad if your potluck dish didn't turn out exactly as planned. Not everyone's a master chef. And this was true back in the day, too. But thankfully, their ancient culinary mistakes are our learning opportunities. A site called Oldenburg LA 77 in northern Germany may have the remains of an early dinnertime disaster from around 5,000 years ago. The meal in question was likely a porridge or malted drink made from various cultivated grains from the region, like barley, emmer, as well as seeds of wild foraged plants. And this really was a great thing for us, if not for the chef. See, we were only able to figure out what the plants were because they were so badly burnt. If the food residues weren't preserved in that charcoal-like crust, they'd have decayed by now. Researchers could even tell that the grains had been allowed to sprout before they were processed and consumed, which is how similar foods are prepared in the region today. This gives the resulting meal not only a greater nutritional bump, but a sweet, nutty flavor. The researchers found quite a few pieces of charred pots, so if you've ever contemplated just throwing everything away after a particularly messy kitchen disaster, you're certainly not alone. This discovery helps paint a picture of what meals might have been like during this time. Much like today, there was a focus on incorporating a diversity of ingredients to prepare a flavor-packed meal. Well, except for the charred bits. So whether you're the type to make noodles from scratch or try your hand at cheese making, it's clear that preparing and sharing food has been a tradition and a shared pastime for ages. And even if you mess it up, maybe the next meal you burn to oblivion will someday become someone's research paper. And don't worry, we've got another video for you barbecue pit masters out there who just want to grill it up like our ancestors did. It explores the question of exactly when it was that we figured out how to control fire. The link is down below. Thanks for watching.